You know what? I missed a couple of things in yesterday's video. Sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about eight things I missed for the Fozzie V3 little amp review. This video format is a complete and blatant ripoff of John Darko's 10 more thoughts or 20 more thoughts when he does a video and then he comes back and talks about a few more points. So John, thank you so much for giving me this idea and hopefully you're okay with me ripping off your format. The Fozzy Audio V3 was just released yesterday and it's almost sold out already on Amazon. When I put this video up, it probably will be sold out on Amazon US because I think there was only one left when I checked this morning. That is a $90 amp. We had a $12 off coupon though, which brought that down to $78 for an extremely capable amp. If you didn't watch the video, I'll link it right here. Please go back and check out the video in its entirety. I felt like I got it mostly right. However, there's still a few things that I saw from the comments and watching back the video yesterday that I wish I would have included. So think of this video as an addendum more information. If you're really interested in this product, you probably want to stick around. One of my longtime patrons and just solid human beings, wonderful human, is Simon Hackshaw. There's a comment in yesterday's video where Simon asked about speaker pairings, and I am sorry that I didn't talk more about speaker pairings. The speaker that I tested the V3 on was the Q Acoustics 5020. That speaker is about 88 dB efficient. I think it's around 87 to 88, which isn't super efficient. That speaker has a very neutral sound signature, but at the same time is also very dynamic. With the V3 also being a very neutral amplifier, I think anything that is on the warm to neutral side is going to work out. Some speakers though that are really exciting on top or really forward in the upper mid range, aren't probably going to be a great pairing with the V3. There's always things that you can do though. Sony SSCS5, depending upon toe-in, depending upon height, where your ear is at compared to the tweeter, I think would pair okay with the V3. But you may have to do some things with placement on the Sonys if you don't want a little bit of intensity on top. The ELAC BS41, and I'll kind of go affordable up to less affordable. ELAC BS41, great pairing. That's a warmer speaker, neutral to warm-ish. Yamo S-Series, and you can get a five-piece home theater set up for $147. The S803s are the ones I would probably pair with this one. The 801s would pair well too, but that's a pretty small speaker. Even though that one's a little bit V-shaped, I think if anything, the neutrality of the amp is going to bring in a little bit more mid-range clarity or a lot more mid-range clarity. Be careful though with the top end because it is boosted a little bit, but the good thing about the 803 is I think it's boosted kind of at 10K and beyond or maybe 6K and beyond. So even though it's boosted in the treble, it's not boosted in the upper mids. So I think it's gonna be really, really good. And I have a pair here, so I'll try it later on. Mid-tier priced, I would look at the B2 Plus from Emotiva if it's even available anymore. I think those might be sold out. B1 Plus, again, it's going to be good, but you're going to have to be careful with placement. ELAC Debut Reference, the older speaker, front ported 6.5 inch woofer, that would be a great pairing as well. SVS Prime, great pairing. Wharfdale Denton, great pairing. Wharfdale Linton, great pairing. That actually might be a really, 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 really good pairing. Polk R200, Polk R100, be careful with placement with the R100s. Anything that has a little bit of forward nature in the upper mid range is gonna be iffy on this amplifier, but you can always mitigate that with toe-in and placement of speakers. It's kind of like doing an EQ, but just moving speakers around to get that EQ. It's off axis performance, basically is what you're working with. <laughs> If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. A lot of people watch me and aren't subscribed. If you subscribe, it really helps me out because I do this for a living. I get more sponsorships and I get more products sent in. So it's a great way to get more videos for free. The only thing that you have to do is please subscribe. 
I appreciate everyone that's watching. If you watch my channel at all, you know I don't do any measurements. I'm not disparaging people that buy things off of measurements. I think that's a smart way to do things. I also think it's smart to experience something. And if you're buying things purely on specs, purely on measurements, on something that is as emotional as music, I don't always think that's a good thing to do. But I think when you take a little bit of measurements, a little bit of listening experience, and you combine them, then that's a great way to make a decision. Since I don't do measurements, I was checking out a few other videos. There is a video, and it's a smaller channel. It's called Budget Audio Labs, and I'll link it probably right here and also in the description. It's a great video. He goes and compares this to the A07, puts it through a whole bunch of different measurement scenarios and dynamic range, sign ad, compares it to the A07 as far as thermal capacities. It's a really good video. And if you're interested in this product, please go watch that video because it's gonna give you a whole bunch more information about the measurement side of the house that I just can't give. <laughs> Ventilation. I don't think I covered this enough. There's ventilation on the top, ventilation on the bottom, and an integrated heat sink underneath the amp chips. The one thing that always chokes out an amplifier that keeps it from performing at its best or keeps it from performing at sustained power levels is heat dissipation. A lot of these amps, since they're class D, they just put it into a case and forget about it. Hope for the best. And I don't think there's a lot of design characteristics going into these amplifiers before the V3. So I know ventilation holes and fans and things like that from other companies have been around for a long time. But it's cool that Fozzie is including these now because I think there's an understanding that the more ventilation you have, the better sustained high power performance you can get from this amplifier. So even though this may seem trivial, the fact that it's integrated into this amplifier is a good sign of things to come from Fozzie Audio, and hopefully other manufacturers like Duke, like IEMA, all the other ones. <laughs> Logarithmic volume pot. I didn't really touch on this because I'm kind of used to different styles of volume pots. I'm kind of used to things jumping around. Sometimes you have to turn it up a lot before you get it louder. Sometimes you barely turn it and it's intense in your face. But this one has a very smooth volume pot, so you're not having giant leaps in different power levels as you turn up the volume knob. And I prefer a longer throw volume pot to get things dialed in just right. So not only the knob is really high quality, but also the volume pot too. We talked about speaker pairings. Let's talk about DAC pairings if you're wanting to get the most out of this product. On the cheap side, the very affordable side, I would look at the SMSL SU1. That's an $80 DAC. It's a fixed output, so it's just two volts or whatever it is output. So you can't control volume on the V3 with the SU1, but it's super affordable and it sounds awesome. Stepping up a bit, I would look at the Topping E50, which does come with remote control. So if you wanted to put a remote control on this and you only have digital inputs, I think the Topping E50 is a product you may consider. Of course, the J2 from Gishelli Labs, the AKM version. I think any version would sound great, but I like the AKM version. A little bit more dynamic, a little bit punchier on the bottom. Since the V3 is so neutral, I think it can benefit from a little bit of oomph on the bottom. And the J2 would give you that oomph, as well as just being a flawless DAC at the price really at double, triple the price. You really want to step up. You can look at the Denifreps Ares 2 or the Eversolo Z6. That thing's awesome. Also has a remote, also has digital VU meters. Looks really, really cool. The cool thing about this amp is it can handle and scale with higher priced products. Higher price doesn't always mean better, but in this case with these DACs, I think you're gonna be surprised at how good it sounds. Cause I was just using the Weem DAC, the internal Weem DAC on a $150 integrated preamp style streamer type of product. So the DAC and the Weem Pro isn't great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. And then I was using the Schkit Sin. DAC is good, but I even talking to Jason Stoddard, he says it's probably not quite as good as the Modi. So if you put a better DAC on here, it's gonna sound even better which is amazing. 
Finally, oops, finally, how to get a remote control on this. Since this is just a volume control, there's no remote that comes with it. This basically is a power amplifier with volume control and a pre-out if you wanna hook up a subwoofer or something. If you wanna put a remote control on this, you're gonna to have to use something like the Schkit Saga, which is a preamp that has a remote control. You're gonna to have to use a DAC that has a remote control if you are only using digital inputs. You can use the Weem Pro because that has an analog input, also has digital inputs, also has a streamer. You can use an aftermarket Weem remote control or you can actually use the app on your phone to control the Weem and you can control volume through that. I like to control volume in the analog domain. That's why I like the Saga, but I've also been controlling volume through DAX for a long time. I think they've worked out the digital volume control so it doesn't crush the resolution, but that's just food for thought. Anyway, if you're interested in the V3, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna support the channel, you can just subscribe to the channel and like this video. You can also sign up for Amazon Music Title or Rune, links in the description. Click sign up, there is a free trial. Even if you quit, I get a couple of dollars. You can buy the V3 if it's available anymore. However, there was only one available on Amazon before I started making this video. You can use any of the links in the description. Most of those are affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more, so it's great to support the channel. You can also sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night we do patron only Zooms, patron only Facebook group, patron only Discord. Use the thanks button down below this video. Buy me a cup of coffee, put a little bit of tips in the tip jar, but don't feel compelled to give me any anything so don't binge watch anything on netflix or hulu binge listen through this extraordinary 90 dollar audiophile amplifier the fozzy audio v3 and fill your soul with happiness and with that i'm randy i'm the cheap audio man